have a date with the angel. Starring Betty White. Bill Williams as Gus Angel. Presented by the Plymouth Dealers of America, who proudly sell and service the beautiful new Plymouth for 1957. The time? Eight months after Vicki and Gus Angel were married. The plot? Wait till the Atomic Energy Commission hears about this. The characters? They have their own fallout. Gus, lemonade. the only thing that's going to be squeezed on it. Got, Put got, your got, neck got, right got, in here, got, honey. Come, get, come, come on. Oh, come on. Come on, drink it. it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I'm sorry. Come on in, Bert. Come on in. We were just having a little fun. And I've got the bruises to prove it. <laughs> hey, kids, come on. Sneak down to my backyard. Me and Kathy got something to show you. Well, I was sort of busy mowing the lawn, Murph. So well, that's what they call it, huh? <laughs> Lemonade, Murph. I'll put sugar in here. <laughs> Look, we got no time to lose. They'll probably be taking them away any minute. Taking who away? Finley. He finally jumped the tracks. <laughs> no matter what Murph says, let's not get mixed up in another neighborhood ranigan, huh? Don't worry about me. Just don't you get carried uh, away. Well, come on, you may never see anything like this again. You should see how he's dressed. <laughs> But remember, we're not going to sign anything, and we're not going to join anything, and we're not going to get mixed up in anything. What's he doing? I can't describe it. You just have to see for yourself. Come on, Fort, through it. Let's go. I like the way you held out, honey. What happened, Lola? Did he quit? Oh, no, he'll be back. Last time, I nearly blew a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> I think we ought to be doing this. I feel like Matt or Harry. Me too, honey. Let's skip it, huh? Oh, stick around. This you can't miss. Shh. Swanee River. <laughs> well, it is Nit Sharnovsky's third concerto. In that case, you are out of step. <laughs> Digging for mushrooms. <laughs> We're all ashamed of ourselves, Mr. Finley. Not me. <laughs> What are you supposed to be, Finley? <laughs> a hoot owl with a hot foot? <laughs> uh, we didn't come down here to spy. We just didn't know what to expect down Everybody here. Everybody off my hands. Off! Off! Father, father, stop that. <laughs> I'm glad you had an opportunity to see some of my work, Mrs. Angel. Did you like my work, Mr. Angel? Well, it was uh, very, uh... Very peppy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Are you a devotee of modern dance? Oh, so that's what you were doing. <laughs> 
With them bare feet, I thought she was making wine. Uh, let's get back to the house, Vicky. We've got some lemonade down there that's getting cold. Now, uh, Mr. Angel, I'm sure that uh, you and Mrs. Angel would be eager to participate in any uh, civic project that was worthy. Of course. Vicky? Well, I'm just listening. Well, perhaps you've heard that the Community Boys Club needs new equipment for its workshop. Oh, we can afford a couple of dollars for something like that. No, no, all we want is a few hours of your time. You see, my school is helping the fund by giving a public entertainment. Well, you can count on us for a couple of tickets, Mr. Finley. We won't guarantee we'll be there, no, but... No, 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 you misunderstand. You see, the psychology department is presenting a modern dance interpretation, and I need a group to work with me. Where are you going to get kangaroos this time of year? <laughs> oh, what about your students, Mr. Finley? Oh, they're too emotionally immature to comprehend the full emotional impact of uh, modern dance. No, I'm going to select a few intelligent neighbors to assist me. Now, I should like to call rehearsal for tomorrow afternoon. Would uh, 1.30 be all right with you, Mrs. Angel? Oh. We're busy at 1.30. Come on, I'm guys. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Finley. Bye-bye. Let's, Let's go get on. out of here. Let's get out of here. Father, Mrs. Angel is busy at 1.30. So? So we'll start the rehearsal at 2. <laughs> I'm going to miss working too with myself while George is in New York for three weeks. Oh, what a familiar sight. <laughs> you can wake up now, sweetheart. The dishes are done. <laughs> what? Oh, I was wide awake, honey. <laughs> sure you were. <laughs> what do you do with yourself when George is away? Well, I always try to keep busy with something worthwhile. Like a few months ago, we started a glee club to raise some money. Mm -hmm. Would you believe it, Vicky? I was the only one who showed up for rehearsal. No. People are willing to buy tickets or give money, but they won't give five minutes of their time. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> you should have called me. I can't sing, but I, I could have turned the sheet in you. <laughs> there you go, sweetheart. Okay. Here you are. Uh, Good grip on it? Uh-huh. Oh. I, <sighs> I wish everybody had your community spirit, Vicky. You should hear the obvious fibs people tell to try and get out of giving up a few hours of their time. Isn't it disgraceful, Gus? What? How about Wilma? She tried to get some people together for a worthy cause and nobody showed up. Should have called us, Wilma. I will next time. Don't forget. Oh, I didn't get a chance to tell you about these weird neighbors of ours down the block. No. We're not expecting anybody, are we? Not that I know of. Well, Mr. Finley. Good evening, Mrs. Angel. Just come in. Well, this is a surprise. In what way? <laughs> This is my dearest friend. I've met Mr. Angel. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Clemson, Mr. Finley. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Finley? I'm not a demonstrative man, Mrs. Angel, so I don't know quite how to say this except to say thank you. You're welcome. For what? For agreeing to be a part of my show. Why, Vicki, you didn't tell me anything about that. I didn't know about it. Uh, I'm afraid you're taking something for granted, Mr. Finley. Oh, not at all. If you remember, I changed the rehearsal from 1.30 to 2.30 at your insistence. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a show is it? Well, my school is uh, giving a show to raise money for the Community Boys Club. Mr. and Mrs. Angel very kindly volunteered their services. Most people give money, but not their time. But we were just talking about that very thing. Mm. The psychology department is responsible for the, uh, for a portion of the program, the scientific portion. Oh, what's it going to be? Well, it's a psychological interpretation of interpretive dance. Psychologically. <laughs> Did you spell angel the usual way? Yes, eh? Uh, why? Well, uh, Dean Caldwell wants to know for the program. Well, we don't want our names on the program. I admire you for that. Personal glory should not be considered when the cause is a worthy one. That's just like you two. 
Well, Mrs. Clemson is going to be our house guest for the weekend. Yeah, we so... can't leave her here all alone. <laughs> Is there room in the show for me? <laughs> we need everyone we can get. You see, Mrs. Angel, how your good example has already brought us another volunteer. You can't imagine what it is to plead with people and get nothing but money. <laughs> we won't let you down, Mr. Finley. We'll be there. Thank you. Good night, all. Ah. Just... Uh. What a dignified man. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Vicky. And you too, Gus. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll go and unpack. She's proud of us. Well, I'm not proud of us. Oh, honey, don't worry. We got all night to think of some excuse to get out of it. I don't worry. <laughs> This is what's up. Mm. Hello? Hello? May I speak to Mrs. Angel? This is Mrs. Angel. Mrs. Angel, this is Dean Caldwell. It's the dean of Mr. Finley's school. Uh, how do you do? Tell him the whole thing was a mistake. Mr. Caldwell. Uh, Mrs. Angel, I call to thank you on behalf of the Community Boys Club. The city, our school, and myself. Oh, please, you mustn't thank us. You know, most people are willing to donate to a cause, but they won't give their time. Why, Mr. Finley tells me that you and your husband committed yourselves the very moment he asked. Committed? <laughs> Honey, you're letting him do all the talk and tell him we can't make it. <laughs> Mr. Caldwell... You know, human nature is a very funny thing, Mrs. Angel. Why, would you believe that some people, after they allow our various directors to count on them, actually try to back out? No. <laughs> That's the way to talk to her. <laughs> I, I realize, Mrs. Angel, this doesn't apply in your case. Oh, incidentally, I hope that Angel is spelled in the usual way. We don't want to be on the program. Thank goodness. Well, this isn't for the program. You see, I've taken the liberty of releasing your name to the newspapers. <laughs> Newspapers? Well, that's the least we could do. We're still looking for people you know, and a good example set by decent, unselfish citizens like you and your husband might inspire others to join us. <laughs> well, we have a friend who's decided to be in it, too. That's splendid. And once again, I wish to thank you on behalf of a very, very grateful community. Goodbye. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, goodbye. You didn't talk him out of it, did you? Gus, we have everything but a contract. Hello, Mr. Finley. Hello. I'm blowing up balloons. <laughs> Uh, will you tell your son we're here for the rehearsal? Why don't I tell my son you're here for the rehearsal? You do that. <laughs> you see what I mean, Wilma? These Finleys are too weird to do anything sensible. Well, at least give it a try, Vicky. The thing that scares me is how me and Cassie got mixed up in it. <laughs> We'd never ever come near it except we saw your names in the newspaper. How'd you get trapped, Gus? I've seen these characters vacuum a lawn. <laughs> well, if what, if what we do here today doesn't make sense, Vicky and I are backing out. Then throw her in reverse, because here he comes. <laughs> Thank you for being prompt. Now, we have a great deal to do, and I'll tell you what's on my mind. I know what's on your mind, and it isn't commercial. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that, and please take off that ridiculous hat. I will if you'll take off those stupid pants. <laughs> so now, what we're going to do here is a visual recreation of the exploding atom. Well, you're coming, Kathy? <laughs> Let us know how it turns out. Yeah. Well, at least give him a chance. These things never sound good when you talk about them. Thank you, Mrs. Clemson. This idea was suggested to me by our science department. However, I will not beg. Well, what do we do, Mr. Finley? 
From what I understand, your husband is in the insurance business and you're a housewife. <laughs> That's not what she meant, Father. Now, I'll start with Mr. Angel while Father puts on the balloons. Uh, Mr. Finley, before I get involved, I'd like to know what the balloons are for. Well, I'm sure you understand the structure of the atom. <laughs> well, roughly, yeah. Well, Father represents the nucleus, and the balloons around his waist are the electrons, that's all. Well, that makes good sense, good. That is the way the atom is constructed. Oh, no. <laughs> Who pumped up your girdle? <laughs> What does Gus do, Mr. Finley? Father is radioactive, and when I, as the scientist, split the atom, the isotopes reach Mr. Angel, which in turn sets off a chain reaction, which in turn sets off an interpretive explosion. I didn't understand one word you said, Mr. Finley. <laughs> and I don't dance, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, I will not beg. I will. Please, Mr. Angel. <laughs> Honey, we are sort of committed. If anybody sees us, we will be. What do I do, Mr. Finley? You're an insurance salesman. Oh, father. <laughs> Stand over here, Mr. Angel. Now, you two hook left arms and circle. Mrs. Murphy, you step on that lever. You see? All right. Now tell us what we just did. You just reacted to the oscillating screech. Now, Mr. Murphy, I know you sing because I hear you in the shower every six months. <laughs> Why? Uh, Murphy, Murphy. Uh, uh, come on now. Uh, sing something, anything at all. Oh, sing that song about uh, here and there the figs. What? Here and there the figs. <laughs> oh! Figure all here, figure all there, figure all here, figure all here. Largo factorum de delicita, largo. La, 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 la. It goes on like that for quite a while. But Martha's beautiful. Oh, I love that opera. Do you know any more? Yeah. Like Red River Valley? <laughs> Later, Father. Now, when Murphy starts to sing, you ladies quiver like this. <laughs> and then go around in a circle as I showed you. And go. Figure here, figure all there, figure all here, figure all there. La, 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 la. commercial. <laughs> What's the song all right? Yes, now, just pick a note out of all that mess and hold it. You are the oscillating screech. <laughs> you know, that's the first decent thing you said to me since we moved here. What do I do, Mr. Finley? I know I'm a housewife, but what do I do? <laughs> You're doing it. Just sit there till we explode you. <laughs> Father, distribute the properties. Say, please. Oh, for heaven's sake, Father, please. That's better. Mind your manners, son. <laughs> this goes in the teeth. And you hold this. What for? So it won't fall. <laughs> now, Mr. Murphy, assume an L shape. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> you must assume an L shape. That's the shape of the oscillating screech. <laughs> now, when I, as a scientist... Father, you're not paying attention. When I, as the scientist, explode the balloon, uh, the atom, the chain reaction will begin. Five, four, three, two... Hey, wait a minute. You didn't tell us what we have to do. Your reactions will be instinctive. You'll know what to do. Five, four, 
three, two... Hey, uh, uh, why doesn't Wilma have a lever like mine? Because you're the electron. Now, let's have no more interruptions. Say, please. Five, four, three, two... Positions, please. Vicky, these things never look good the first time. Hot and gush. One way. Now, let's start the thing again in reverse. <laughs> with the explosion at this end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, back. All right, Mrs. Angel, start. Idea, Father. I believe the idea was to show a chain reaction with the heliotrope. I don't mean that. Uh, can we go now, Mr. Finley? No, now please maintain position. Dean Caldwell will be here any minute, and I want to think. <laughs> Better think up something else. I don't want to go through that routine again. <laughs> you got another cigarette, Gus? Yeah, catch Murph. Right. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. Tell it isn't commercial. <laughs> you got any better ideas? I sure have. I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Finley. What do you mean your atomic reactor blew up in your face? <laughs> that was just a figure of speech, Dean Caldwell. I'm afraid that my group will not be ready for the show. Well, they couldn't be any worse than the others I've seen this afternoon. The English department is fumbling through an uncut version of Macbeth. The Spanish department is doing a series of living pictures that would curl your hair. And I... <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't put that right. <laughs> Could we have one more week? Oh, I don't see how. The ticket's been sold for this week. Let's take a look at your people. I might have some ideas. Well, first, let me explain to you what we're trying to do. This is a psychological interpretation of interpretive dance psychologically. Well, at least the auditorium is air-conditioned. the other department come up with something like this. Like that? You have me worried with all that psychological malarkey. <laughs> Why, this is just great, Finley. What do you do? I'm the assistant director. Get uh, down at the end of the line, Levy. <laughs> all right. All together now, a uh, one, a uh, two, now.
got a date with an angel, going to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on the same network. And the dramatic show Climax every week on another network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody.